Hello everyone, before we start today's video, a quick bit of fragrance news. Uh, this week Armani have announced that they're going to be releasing a follow-up, or two follow-ups, to Stronger With You, and because it's you, two fragrances that were aimed at young couples in the first throes of love. And the new fragrances are going to be aimed at people coming to the end of their relationship. The men's version is going to be called Stronger Without You, and the women's one will be called Because I'm Taking Half Your Salary and I'm Keeping the House. Hello everyone, so today I'm going to give you my view on the house of Dua, that's Dua Fragrances. They've sent me seven fragrances so far and I'm going to give you my appraisal of how they smell and how they perform. A lot of them are copies of really popular expensive niche fragrances. These fragrances come in 30ml sizes, prices seem to range from around about $45 to $60 or equivalent prices around the world. So let's see what I think of them, of course they're quite a controversial house aren't they? Okay, so Dua Fragrances. Here's my seven fragrances I've got. The first one I'm going to talk about is Evening with, uh, sorry, An Evening with the Mobster. Okay, so this one is widely regarded as being a clone of Creation E or Enigma by Roger Dove. It's got a really boozy, sweet theme to this one. Some people compare it to Coca-Cola, actually, the smell of that. And there's a maybe a sort of tobacco-y kind of note in there as well, I think. It's really rich, it's really deep, it has some vanilla, it has a little bit of booziness, and I quite enjoy it. It's not my favourite scent that I've ever smelled, uh, and I've smelled the Roger Dove one as well, and the, I could tell there was a similarity, but I've only tried that one once in a department store. So, so far, I do enjoy that one, but I'm not wildly excited by it. Here's one that I am a bit more excited about, and this is Water of Arabia. Now, this one is a clone of Creed's Silver Mountain Water. That is a fragrance that is really, really nice and fresh and very, very wearable, but it does have a really bad reputation for having slightly weak performance. Water of Arabia, I can honestly tell you, really addresses that problem. It's very, very strong. It's, it's almost a beast mode fragrance. Certainly for a freshie, it's very, very strong in projection, longevity, and all that good stuff. The notes that you get out of this one, similarly to the original, there's bergamot, a little bit of a black current sweetness and a sort of muskiness in the base. It doesn't have quite the same level of inkiness or this kind of tea note that Silver Mountain Water has but it's very very close actually to it and it is much stronger. So for fans of Silver Mountain Water wanting more projection I think that is an excellent excellent choice. Next up we've got Royal Portugal. This is their take on Creed's Bois de Portugal, one of my favourites and that's why they sent it to me. I love Bois de Portugal by Creed, it's a really rich, woody, spicy, masculine scent with a little bit of old school 50s or 60s kind of citrus note greenness in there. This one is an absolutely superb copy of that, it's just a little bit more fresh I think, a little bit more green and fresh and a little bit less spicy and warm and rich but there's not a lot in it. It's excellent, it performs really well, the, the projection and longevity again is e excellent on this one and considering that Bois de Portugal is now becoming uh, a little bit I, well I think it might be discontinued not entirely sure but it's certainly I don't think they've brought any bottles out in the new 100ml sizes that Creed are releasing Royal Portugal is a great great subject substitute for that one uh, the performance is excellent and it gives out this really classy old school air so I've really really enjoyed that Royal Elixir is another one I think they vaulted this one so I'm not sure you can get it anymore I will talk about it briefly though. It's a very interesting uh, scent, this one. I think this is an original scent. I don't think it's specifically meant to be based on any other popular niche or designer scent. It's fruity, it's citrusy, it's woody and it's masculine and it's got a certain sweetness and spiciness about it. It's very, very interesting. It's very, very powerful. The notes are on the back there. So you've got smoky pineapple, grapefruit, cloudy sage, carbon, cardamom, violet leaves, coriander seeds, pomeros, nutmeg, cinnamon. That gives you some idea. It's a very, very interesting in your face kind of sort of fresh masculine scent and I find it very intriguing. I hope they might bring that one back. Next up, Q 
Cupid's Lust. Okay, this is another one, as far as I can tell, of their original fragrances. It is, this is an extreme gourmand. Chocolate, Belgian, it smells like Belgian chocolate. I think there's a cognac note in there as well. Boozy Belgian chocolates that you might eat at Christmas or that kind of thing. Very, very sweet, incredibly sweet, incredibly photorealistic chocolate. They've captured that brilliantly. For me, that kind of fragrance is not my thing. I wouldn't actually feel very comfortable wearing this one. Maybe some ladies would or people who are just into really gourmand fragrances. Very, very heavy, very sweet. You could call it cloying. It is very high quality and it really, really smells like you are smelling Belgian chocolate. But for me, I would call that one a pass. I kind of enjoy it for fun, but wearing it isn't something I would really consider in public. Next up, we've got another Creed clone. They clone loads of different niche houses, but so far I've, I've opted to pick a few of the Creed ones because I was interested in them. Imperial Pastique here is a clone of Millicene Imperial. Everyone know that's, knows that smells really nice. Fresh, citrusy watermelon with a sort of salty sea breeze note in there as well. This captures that absolutely brilliantly, but it amps up the performance. Everyone knows Millicene Imperial is a little bit weak in performance, and this really, really bolsters that performance and gives you a almost beast mode version I've worn this several several times now and it, it really kind of pumps out a real cloud you're conscious of yourself as you wear it it captures the essence of the scent much better in my opinion than Sean John's unforgivable a sort of cheaper designer or celebrity scent version and I think it's hot that's one of my absolute favorites if you're frustrated with silver with Millicent Imperial Try Imperial Plastic. Here's Queer de Francais. That means French leather, and it's based on a memo. That's a memo fragrances fragrance, and it's that was of course called French leather. Haven't smelt the original in this case. So, um, however, I do enjoy this one. Vetiver and rose are the two things that really spring out of me. It's sort of fresh, but it's got this rosy sweetness and smoothness. And if there's leather in here, it's a very suede-like, very smooth leather. Leather. I have really enjoyed smelling this one and wearing it. Uh, it's a little bit of an acquired taste or something that you're going to either like it or you're not. So be careful. If you like Memo French Leather, maybe this is a really good choice. I haven't tried that one myself, so I can't really comment on the clone quality there. But I have really enjoyed this fragrance so far in my wearings. Again, you know, it just lasts for ages. I spray them a lot on cards. They're still there two, three, four, five, six, seven days later. Of course, on skin counts more. But there too, every one of these seems to give really good performance. I know the company is controversial. There was a lot of controversy because uh, they, they were a bit um, very active in their uh, marketing on Facebook. There was loads and loads of adverts when they first came out on Facebook. And also their, their scents are, are clones, of course. And that's always controversial because they're copying. They're not doing an original thing. So overall, my appraisal of the house is I really enjoy their fragrances so far. They have really, really good performance and they smell the, the ones that I've tested versus the originals they're not a hundred percent the same but they are really really good quality clones and yes I do think they are better so far than the cheaper sort of Club de Nuit intense man type clones of niche fragrances that you can get they extract a parfum so that's a really good thing they're strong However, you have to say that the prices are not dirt cheap. You're getting a 30 mil thing. The pre presentation is not spectacular. I know they've changed the lid, so you get a slightly more ornate lid. You can see some of the stickers there now a little bit more fancy than the earlier ones. So they've really, really improved that. But I can see why people are, not everyone's convinced. They're not low priced fragrances, considering you're only getting 30 mils. The, the challenge for this company is they have to prove that they're actually bringing out stuff that's stronger performing than the originals in the case of these Creed ones for it to be worth spending a reasonable amount of money on them. They're still cheaper, of course, than the original niche fragrances. Also, what I'm really excited about is they're doing some really hard to find ones. We've got um, Royal Service by Creed. They've done a version of that. Pico Via Dharma from uh, Zerzhov, a really, really expensive $600 fragrance. When it comes to that kind of money, you can see why it could be worth spending the money on the Dua version because they are high, high quality clones. So there's a case for, there's a case against. They're not dirt cheap. They're not like our Marf or Al Haramain versions or our Rehab that are really cheap. But I think that to some extent you're getting what you pay for. They have very, very high quality notes in them. They don't smell like a cheap version of what you're um, trying to imitate. 
but you might detect some subtle differences. Performance is always equal to, or in most cases, better than the original fragrance because there's so much oil in them. So I'm pretty much a thumbs up person on Dua fragrances. There are two or three for any fragrance fan that might well be worth investing in. So that's my take on them so far. I'm hoping to get a few more and try them out and give a bit more detail about, you know, versus comparison with what they're cloning. Let me know what you think about Dua fragrances. I know they always stir up opinions in the fragrance community and I welcome that, but I'm uh, cautiously a, a bit of a thumbs up person. Thanks very much for joining me. Remember, whatever you're doing in life, let's project. I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye.